It was a beautiful day. Everybody was in great spirits. Back to Boston. The bomb went off right in front of us. People are screaming. Survivors share their stories. I'm looking just across the street at a guy sitting in his chair with his legs blown off. About the race for their lives. God, how am I going to get to the point where I can forgive? Well, welcome to the 700 Club. It's been a very difficult week in much of the Midwest. Millions of people have been watching the skies for possible tornadoes. Three more tornadoes touched down in Oklahoma and Arkansas Thursday, and people in more Oklahoma are still recovering from that massive tornado that hit last week. Ephraim Graham has the story. Tornado season got off to a late start this year, but it seems to be making up for lost time. With more than a thousand reports of severe weather over the last two weeks. Overnight, reports of several tornadoes across the Midwest. A storm chaser caught this dramatic video of the tornado that touched down in York, Nebraska. And this video shows roofs torn off buildings from a tornado that hit the Tulsa, Oklahoma area. These black storm clouds have residents in those areas continuing to brace for the worst. Forecasters say the cities in most danger of seeing tornadoes today are Kansas City, Tulsa, and Oklahoma City. Residents of Moore, Oklahoma are working to clean up the damage from the EF5 twister that hit them last week. And they're also keeping their eyes on the sky, fearful of another devastating storm. We're playing it on your head of what happened that day. Just over and over again, it's not going away. Counseling services are being offered for free in Moore and other surrounding communities hit by recent tornadoes. Operation Blessing is also on the ground in Moore, helping residents cope and pick up the pieces. After two days, your emotions really start to drop. And then there are people like Operation Blessing and uh, Home Depot where I work and different organizations, churches that are here to help us. That lifts our spirits so much. It doesn't have to be money. It doesn't have to be anything but just a hug. And it lifts your spirits, your emotions. And for that, I'm forever grateful. Volunteers are handing out Home Depot gift cards and working with residents to clear debris. They're also providing those all-important hugs and spiritual support through prayer. Ephraim Graham, CBN News. When disasters strike, we want to strike back with hands of love and compassion. And if you want to be a part of it, you can give directly to the Operation Blessing Disaster Relief Fund. All you have to do is call us, one 800 759-0700 and say, I want to help the people in Oklahoma. We've been on the ground in Moore, Oklahoma since day one, the day after those horrible tornadoes hit. And we're helping people rebuild their homes and rebuild their lives. And you can be a part of it by giving. Call us, 1-800-759-0700. Well, some leaders are warning of growing threats to religious freedom in America. Lee Webb has more on that story from the CBN Newsroom. Lee? And Gordon, one of those leaders warns that to silence religious freedom is to silence the moral conscience of America. Reverend Samuel Rodriguez spoke at Thursday's annual Religious Freedom Conference in Washington. He's president of the Hispanic Evangelical Association. But Thursday, he called the people of all faiths to come together to build a firewall against what he terms unprecedented attempts by the government to violate religious liberty. He said the IRS's targeting of Christian groups and the government mandate to provide birth control are examples of the dangerous road America is traveling. I never would have believed in my generation that I would see this taking place. So silence is not an option. Today's complacency will lead to tomorrow's captivity. And religious freedom stands as the womb by which all the other liberties emerge and flourish. Rodriguez says Uncle Sam needs to be reminded that he may be our earthly uncle, but he is not and never will be our heavenly father. One state representative from Oklahoma says bashing religion is now socially acceptable and even applauded. Democrat Rebecca Hamilton says believers have become targets of ridicule and harsh criticism, and she worries it could lead to violent persecution. The Boy Scouts' decision to allow gay members has led some churches to cut their ties with the Scouts, and a group is now spearheading an effort to start an alternative organization. 
Heather Sells has that story. Disenchanted scout leaders and others in the faith community will meet next month to form a new organization for boys. The alternative to scouting operates under this website right now, but could have any name. Organizers say the program will be Christ-centered, non-denominational, and provide a safe haven for those who want to leave the scouts. We know that thousands of churches around the country are considering this right now as we speak. Because churches sponsor 70 percent of scout units, they are considered key to its future. But so far, it's not clear just how many will leave. The largest faith-based sponsor, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, says it will stay. Another large sponsor, the Catholic Church, is reserving judgment for now. But the Southern Baptist Convention is expected to recommend next month that its 47,000 churches pull out. In the meantime, they are beginning to slip away one by one. In Alabama, First Baptist Pastor Greg Walker says Troop Number 2 will no longer meet at his church. To be a member or to be an organization or a ministry of the church, you have to align with what the Bible actually aligns with. Some Eagle Scouts, like Bill Bright, are also taking a stand, returning their badges in protest over the new policy. I don't see that fitting into the, the example that I knew and loved as, as a Boy Scout at all. Bright, like many others, believes the new policy will harm boys and generations to come. Heather Sell, CBN News. It's a story we'll continue to follow. In other news, unemployment has hit another record high in the Eurozone. It rose to 12.2 percent in April. Nearly 19 and a half million people are out of work. Unemployment numbers are even higher for young people in Europe. The numbers show just how bad Europe's economic crisis is and how difficult it will be to turn it around. Some economists warn that the Eurozone still has not hit bottom. Well, you've heard the expression, the third time's the charm. It applied at the 86th annual National Spelling Bee. Canadol. May I have the language of fortune, please? German-derived Yiddish. That's 13-year-old Arvin Mahankali of New York. He finished third in the tournament the previous two years, but if he could spell that word, canadal, correctly, he would finally take home the trophy. Canadal. K-N-A-I-D-E-L. Canadal. <laughs> he did it, and along with the trophy, he took home $30,000. Good for him. And just to show you how difficult this contest was, here's a look at some of the words the contestants had to spell. I'm not even sure I can pronounce them correctly. Sinofission, that's a class of blue-green algae, we're told. Cabotage, that's behavior befitting a second-rate actor, like me, trying to pronounce these words. And oleancranon. That's the clinical term for the funny bone. Not funny, I guess, if you, try, you have to try to spell it, Gordon. <laughs> well, I thank heaven for spell check. If it weren't for that, I'd, I'd be misspelling every single day. And a shout out to all the family of that winner. Uh, they're, they're, they're in Hyderabad and they were watching uh, and there was a great uh, sound of rejoicing that he, he could actually spell a Yiddish word. What an amazing world we live in. That, uh, someone from whose family is originally from Hyderabad, India, grows up here in America, uh, uh, took him three times, uh, and he finally won the spelling bee. And now, Terry, I hear he's done with spelling, and he's moving on to <laughs> physics. To physics. Yes. Wow. Not surprising. I'm not sure where you'd use any of those words you came up with, Lee, but whatever. <laughs> Canadal. Okay, so coming up, we have a radical response to Muslims in the aftermath of the Boston bombings. Hear how Christians are being told to act. That's next. You have a son that you do not know. He's reaching for you. I want my family back. Go make some good memories together. Crash landed. Son, if we are going to survive this, you must realize that fear is not real. Danger is very real, but fear is a choice. Together, we will survive. 
After Earth, rated PG-13, now playing. I want to fall in love. At ChristianMingle.com, you can join the largest, fastest growing community of Christian singles and find God's match for you, the way we did. Joining is easy and free at ChristianMingle.com. Monday, Confessions from a Meth Head. I would get my paycheck and then I would disappear for four or five days. And the truth that set him free. Something happened right there. And then he sold over 10 million records and packed out concerts across the world. Carmen joins us live Monday on The 700 Club. For most Americans, Islam remains a, somewhat of a mystery, and a, a, it's a religion they don't know much about. Well, there's a new DVD series that teaches people about Islam, and it's being done with the help of former Muslims. Gary Lane has that story. Most Muslim immigrants come to North America for educational and economic opportunities. Others come to escape oppression. On a rare occasion, some, like the Sarnayev brothers, harm the nation that has welcomed them. Wajdi Iskander is a former Muslim from Sudan. Suddenly, when they come here, they change. They change to be fanatic. Government can only do so much to protect us from Islamic fanaticism. So how should we respond beyond praying for our nation? A new Christian DVD teaching series called Truth Unlocked provides spiritual and educational responses. I think it's going to help our nations our countries to be well equipped to uh, deal with terrorism and to also deal with the people here that we need to take care of, the Muslim people that God brought here for us to give them the gospel right here. The Truth Unlocked DVD series provides an understanding of Islamic religious beliefs. Tim Clemens is co-producer of Truth Unlocked. This came about with uh, just our kids interacting with other uh, Muslim kids within their school and I felt very ill-equipped uh, and ignorant towards another culture that had moved in. El Hayat Woman's talk show host Amani Mostafa appears on the Truth Unlocked DVD. She is a former Muslim who says Westerners should understand Islamic culture before establishing a relationship with a Muslim. A man uh, and his wife are welcoming a couple into their home, and uh, the, the man of the house would extend the hand to shake the hand of the wife. Instantly, she's offended because she's veiled and she's not supposed to be shaking a man's hand. Right there, he broke a rule. So it takes a while for us to correct these things. Terror attacks like the Boston Marathon bombing may cause people to shy away from pursuing a relationship with Muslims. Mustafa says Christians shouldn't fear sharing their faith because Muslims hunger for a closeness to God. When a Christian person come and present to me the God that he loves and worships and live with, that is an eye opener and a heart opener to many of us. And we see today that when Muslims are offered the freedom to choose Christ, they do by the millions. And Christians don't have to read the Quran before witnessing to Muslims. I think it's a lot more important for them to understand what the gospel say, how to relate the gospel to them, to the Muslims. Mustafa says Christians should tell the truth. Ask him about what is that God, that who is that God you're worshiping, and, and tell them the truth. We don't worship the same God, and let me tell you why. A follow-up DVD called Far From Home, A Different West will be available in the near future. Most evangelism tools are created and presented by Western Christians. This one is done by former Muslims who now follow Jesus. The Christian, they explain it in a Christian mindset, but now you have kind of a, a convert, uh, a believer in Christ from the same background who understand exactly what they're going through because we went through it. One that addresses Muslim misconceptions and questions about Christianity. It's my neighbor, it's the, my coworker, it's my child's uh, schoolmate. They're individuals who need Christ. 
as much as anybody else, as much as I needed Christ. A revelation replacing acts like this with more of this. Gary Lane, CBN News. We've got to remember what the Bible says about conversion. It says the goodness of God leads to repentance. And the more people can see the goodness of God in us, the acceptance, the love, the open arms, uh, the more they're going to turn. We need to be more like Jesus with, with Muslims. We need to reflect him. And just as he did with unbelievers, reach out with love because love never fails. Terry? Well, coming up next, they ran the marathon. Now they have to finish the race. You got the smell of the gunpowder. You got blood everywhere. You got people screaming hysterically. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, God, how am I going to get to the point where I can forgive? How they found that strength, that's next. Hi, I'm Chuck Woolery. You know, over the years you've heard me say two and two, but now I'm here to talk about three for free. If you're struggling with pain and infection from old style catheters, then you need Medical Direct Club's new virtually pain-free disposable catheters. Right now, you can get Medical Direct Club's three for free sample pack with one self-lubricating catheter, one polished eyelet catheter, and a travel size catheter. You get your free pack, see which one's right for you. You use an old style catheter, they're rough, they're very painful. The new ones, virtually pain-free. You know, Medicare and your insurance now pay for up to 200 of these virtually pain-free catheters per month at little or no cost to you. And if our catheters aren't virtually pain-free, then we'll pick them up for free. You'll never know unless you try them. Call now to get your three for free sample pack. Call toll-free 1-800-206-3360. That's 1-800-206-3360. Call now. Are you suffering with joint discomfort but can't find a product that gives you the relief you need? Then stay tuned because the next 60 seconds will change everything. Because we're about to guarantee the first 100 callers a complimentary two-week sample of Instaflex, the top-selling joint formula at GNC. Instaflex is a top seller because it's our most powerful joint formula ever. So it can give you the relief you need. And now you're guaranteed to receive a complimentary two-week sample of Instaflex if you're one of the first 100 people to call 1-800-927-5858. If lines are busy, try again. Instaflex gives powerful, effective relief for your knees, hands, even your hips. And you're guaranteed a complimentary two-week sample if you're one of this station's first 100 callers. Instaflex is available at GNC, Vitamin World, and Rite Aid Pharmacies. But you can only guarantee your complimentary two-week sample by calling now. 1-800-927-5858. 1-800-927-5858. Every year on the third Monday in April, Massachusetts celebrates Patriots Day. It commemorates the anniversary of the battles of Lexington and Concord, the first battles in the Revolutionary War. This Patriots Day, shortly before 3 p.m., near the finish line of the Boston Marathon, a different kind of battle was underway. When Boston's marathon began in Hopkinton, runners were on their mark. But they would soon chase a great distance that would feel as deep as it ran long. Well, the day started uh, with a tremendous amount of anticipation and excitement. Uh, you've been training for six months, uh, six days a week. Went out to the site um, and, and, and started running the race. It was a beautiful day. Tom, it was a gorgeous day and everybody was in great spirits. Down the road, Fenway Park was packed. Catcher Jared Saltalamachia hit a home run and his Red Sox rallied for a win. We just finished the game and we were in the clubhouse, got on the bus, and one of the guys just you know, said, hey, there was a bomb at the finish line of the marathon, and then there was another one. Rob Davis had just finished the 26-mile race. He was exhausted. He toweled off and ate, then waited to cheer on a friend near the finish line. After hearing the first blast, he was caught 20 feet from the second explosion. The bomb went off right in front of us. People are screaming, and we've gone from a beautiful day in Boston 
to a war zone instantaneously. And I'm looking just across the street at a guy sitting in his chair with his legs blown off. I look down at my feet and the bone of his leg are at my feet. At the same time, there's a girl that's on fire and she's running towards me and a police officer grabs her and starts patting down her hair. This girl is shell-shocked, freezing, naked on Boylston Street. Uh, I start shaking, I'm shaking again. It just, you go back into this and you got the smell of the gunpowder, you got blood everywhere, you got people screaming hysterically. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, God, how am I gonna get to the point where I can forgive? It's a question that still lingers, challenging many, including some of those who visit the recently restored sidewalk along the Boylston bombing sites. The famed marathon of determination and achievement quickly changed, catching all of us flat-footed. It moved to a much different race, one with hurdles, hurdles of fear and forgiveness. I can't at all forgive the two of them or anyone who else was involved. I don't think any motive or any reasoning behind any action that they had planned is ever forgivable. These guys had deliberate intentions to maliciously hurt people. Um, you know, I think everybody can forgive things that happen, but something like that, I personally just, I don't feel there's any room for forgiveness there. Yeah, I want to get angry. Yeah, I want to do some hurtful things, but why, you know? My ultimate goal, my ultimate life is for him, and that's not his way. He wants me to forgive, so I'm going to forgive because I'll lay my life down for him. Sanjin Sharma was five miles away from the blast at the bottom of Heartbreak Hill. That's as far as he got. Police stopped him and other runners as ambulances raced by. As a pastor and counselor, he's encouraging those who can't see past injustice. And what I share with people is that's a bad place to remain. Resentment and bitterness becomes a place of comfort. It becomes a place where we like to stay. And like many have said, it becomes our own prison. And, and we, we cannot escape and we cannot get beyond. America's most beloved ballpark became a sanctuary of support and strength as the Red Sox helped brand the call for Boston to be strong. Jared's last name, the longest in Major League history, provides him with a reminder. Saltalamakia, it means to jump over a thicket. It's pretty cool because it, it, you know, constantly that's what we're doing is we're jumping over something. We all come to a gap in the road in our, our lives that we need to, you know, get over. For me, that's been a big thing where I don't want to cut my Christianity short. I don't want to cut my relationship with God short and cut corners. And I want to just be at, you know, all in, just be all in for him. And, you know, then I won't ever have to worry about that gap in the road. You know, I always have him to help me get over it. And this is where I believe our faith is so essential. If we look at Jesus, there's no one who's been wronged like him in the same way. And yet, he looks down at those who hurt him and he's able to release, he's able to let go. His example helps us and guides us through, through the minefield of emotions that we go through. Rob lives in Hopkinton, not far from the marathon starting line. He's a fixture in the community as a runner and pastor. He's helping others process through their grief and anger while testing the metal of his own faith. God is telling us we have to forgive. It's really for our benefit. As I was able to say, look, I can forgive this person. There's like a weight comes off my shoulders. There's a sense of freedom that I get. We have access to resurrection power in the midst of our daily events. You need to love your enemy. We have to wrestle with what Christ is telling us He wants us to do. It's not an optional thing. And a challenge to say, can I really walk this out? Can I, can I do what Jesus did? When He's on the cross, He says something which is so bizarre. Father, forgive them. They do not know what they've, what they've done. Has your Christianity been tested? Without a doubt, 100%. There's so much emotions build up through this whole uh, ordeal. Just think about um, more than just yourself and stop being selfish for that, that moment and um, you know, what it truly means uh, to be a Christian. 
and you know that's and that's what everybody sees. But when evil comes at us, our response, the power in our lives, comes by being able to repay that evil and 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 really undo that evil with blessing, with 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 courage, and that's. And that's where I think we can overcome the fear, and that's where I believe we can overcome bitterness. How do you process releasing forgiveness? You know, going to these hospitals, seeing, you know, I talked to a gentleman who was there with his four-year-old son, and then that's when the second bomb went off, and that's when he realized that, you know, his leg had, you know, been blown off, basically. And the first thing he did was grab his son and just protect him. Um, and then he, he called an officer over and told the officer, just take my son and, and protect him, keep him safe, you know, put him wherever you gotta put him. And you know what, I, I look at that and I say, you know, that's what Jesus does to us. You know, he takes us and protects us. Are we people of faith or not? Is God who God says he is? Will God do what God promises to do? And to say, we don't control this universe, we don't control these things, but Jesus does and can. We say it's not our strength, it's God who protects us. If we will allow Him and depend on Him, that's not passive, that's, that's faith. Well, we have to jump over the hedge. He gets us there. Boy, what an incredible story of looking at two pictures, some who really struggled with the forgiveness and some who understood the concept that get yeah, forgiveness and, and is and for he, us. <laughs> and even when you do understand the concept, the, uh, it, you know, it, anyone out there who's saying, you know, how can we plot revenge? Mm -hmm. You know, how can we get back? And you, and you get that tightness in your chest. And, and that's the prison. And that's what they're talking about. You know, plotting revenge, harboring bitterness, uh, anger. Uh, it's, it's like trying to take poison, hoping you're going to kill the other person. It doesn't work that way. And, and Jesus shows us the way. It's, it's difficult. And he even says, this door is narrow. This gate's narrow. But just imagine Jesus. Here he is. He's betrayed. All his friends have left him. People tell lies about him. He's falsely accused. He's falsely judged. And then he's delivered over to Roman soldiers who beat him, who mock him, who spit on him who scourge him and then nail him to a cross. And as he's hanging and as he's dying, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That, to me, is amazing. But it shows us the way through, that even when we are righteous, even when we're just in our anger, even when it's we're, we're, it's okay to plot revenge. He's showing us now there's a better way. And that way is forgiveness. And then he challenges us even more. It's more than just forgiveness. He says, love your enemies. Do good to those that persecute you. We've been in, involved in a war in terrorism for a long time. And our current wars, physical wars, don't seem to be working all that well. How about a spiritual battle where our, our weapons are not of this world or not carnal? How about a spiritual battle where we say, let's reach out. Let's do good to those who persecute us. Let's love our enemies. I think if we resolve to do that, we can have the victory. Terry? Well, still ahead, we'll take a walk through the city of David, meet the woman who's unearthed the king's palace, and find out what she's looking for next. I love my grandma and grandpa. When my grandma fell, Life Alert saved her. All grandmas and grandpas should have Life Alert. Life Alert is a lifesaver. If it weren't for Life Alert, I wouldn't be sitting here today. Life Alert has helped me by saving my life. My husband is alive because of Life Alert. Life Alert saved my life. I would give up anything in order to continue having Life Alert. 
Life Alert saves a life from a catastrophe every 11 minutes. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-825-9820. That's 1-800-825-9820. Call now at 1-800-825-9820 to get a free brochure. 1-800-825-9820. 1-800-825-9820. Welcome back to the 700 Club. Nigeria's House of Representatives has voted to ban same-sex marriage in that country, and it outlawed any groups that actively support gay rights. Representatives appeared to approve the measure unanimously on a voice vote. The measure now goes to the Nigerian president for his approval. It's not clear if he will sign it into law. But other African nations have passed similar laws. They believe the West is challenging their traditional values. The United Kingdom, for example, has threatened to stop aid to countries that discriminate against homosexuals. Operation Blessing completed a six-month project to bring clean water to a Honduran village. A large water tank collects water from a mountain spring. That water is then treated with chlorine and piped down to the village. Teams built access points at the local school and in every home. Villagers celebrated completion of the project with a ceremony, and as a symbolic gesture, one villager stepped forward there and smashed a clay pot on the ground. It was meant to show that never again will the villagers there have to face danger to collect water. From now on, every family will have much easier access to safe, clean drinking water. You can find out more about what Operation Blessing is doing around the world by going to ob.org. Stay tuned, Gordon and Terry will be back after this. The news never stops. As a news reporter, I get to travel across the nation producing stories that affect people everywhere. A lot of people work behind the scenes to put it all together every day. Whatever the topic, I have the opportunity to tell others what I see. My faith in Jesus Christ motivates everything I do. I love meeting people from all walks of life and I get to report on stories that you won't see anywhere else. My name is Mark Martin. I'm a news reporter and I work at CBN. Jack and I are having the time of our lives. The kids are on their own and now we're back in control of our time and the way we spend our money. That's why Consumer Cellular is the perfect cell phone company for us. We get great service and compared to our old plan, we're saving a ton every month. Consumer Cellular is the wireless provider for people who want affordable service without the contracts. <laughs> Listen, I don't think I'm cheap. I only want to pay for what I need. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what do you pay a month for Consumer Cellular? My bill can be as low as $10, $15 a month. Wow. But we can change our plan anytime. So even those months we use it a lot, we're always getting the best price. Try Consumer Cellular risk-free for 30 days with free activation, a $35 value, and free shipping. Consumer Cellular is the exclusive wireless provider for AARP members. Ask about your special discounts. Call Consumer Cellular at 1-800-730-5103. Go online to ConsumerCellularTV.com or visit a Sears store today. In 2005, an Israeli archaeologist announced to the world that she had uncovered the ruins of King David's palace in Jerusalem. Since then, Eliot Mazar has excavated various sites in Jerusalem, and each new discovery supports the biblical accounts of David and his son Solomon. <laughs> Three thousand years ago, the entire city of Jerusalem fit on this 12-acre hill. Here you can see part of the wall rebuilt by Nehemiah, the water tunnel dug by King Hezekiah, and the Pool of Siloam, where Jesus healed a blind man. This is the city of David. Welcome to the City of David. Good morning, my name is Miriam. Today, it's one of Jerusalem's top tourist sites with close to half a million visitors every year. This is one of the most exciting places on earth. People from all over the world come to this place and for the first time understand that what they're reading in the text matches the archeology span in the ground. 
The city of David is more than just a tourist attraction. It's also a live archaeological dig. The Bible says this is where King David built his palace, and one archaeologist says she's found it. For Alat Mazar, digging is a family affair. In 1948, her grandfather, Benjamin Mazar, was the first archaeologist to get a digging permit in the new state of Israel. And when the Israelis recaptured Jerusalem in 1967, he started excavating the area around the Temple Mount. His granddaughter, Elat, was working by his side when she was just 11 years old. What I've learned from him, the major thing is that the Bible is part of our historical sources to be used and re-studied and re-examined again and again. It doesn't object in any way to our scientific, archaeological capability of using the best methods for excavations. It goes side by side and it fits beautifully, and it should. Like her grandfather, Mazar is uncovering the Jerusalem of the Bible, layer by layer. In 2005, she started digging in the city of David with one goal in mind. King David's palace. <laughs> Well, I had my assumptions based on the evidence at that time. And then when I started the excavations, um, it was, of course, an open question. It wasn't long before she found what she was looking for. We saw the large walls of some structure. But they were so large that I said, wow, OK, forget about King David's palace. We're talking about a fortress here. We realized that this structure as monumental and impressive as it is, is the first structure ever built in that spot. So the question, who built this structure and what was this structure uh, built for? Mazar soon found her answer. We've got a marvelous, marvelous historical source, which called the Bible. The core of historical events surely are there. Second Samuel 5.11 says the Phoenician king Hiram sent messengers to David and cedar trees and carpenters and masons, and they built David a house. So it's a palace fortress, well built for good reasons. This is most probably the palace that King Chiram built for, for King David. We know its date, which is around 1000, which is the time of King David. The Phoenician style of construction is quite emphasized. The Phoenicians are great builders, as we learn from our excavations in Phoenician sites. Inside, the team found more evidence of royalty, from ancient seals used by court officials to a variety of carved ivory utensils, too expensive for a regular home, but perfect for a palace. The major part of this structure is still hidden, needs to be excavated. What we have in hand is less than a quarter, I would say really much less. Across the street from the city of David, Mazar is directing another dig as well. Just outside the Temple Mount, she found more royal ruins, this time from David's son, Solomon. In 2010, excavators revealed a giant wall more than 220 feet long and almost 20 feet high. Mazar says this is the city wall described in 1 Kings 3, which says that Solomon built the wall all around Jerusalem. It connected David's old city with Solomon's new temple. We can really say that the biblical uh, description of King Solomon building the wall of Jerusalem around suits so well what we see. This is the only place that a fortification line is needed. It's surrounding that area. It connects to the Temple Mount. It's everything that fits the biblical story. Critics were quick to dispute Mazar's conclusion, but she had carbon dating on her side. Pottery shards found at the ground floor dated to the 10th century BC, when Solomon was king. Sometime in the late 10th century, early 9th century, the king of Jerusalem built a most highly skilled fortification that indicated it's a strong regime, centralized, with great abilities. But then we have this biblical story that tells about King Solomon doing the same thing. So 
he did and then like 50 years later some other king did the same thing so i think we can drop all these you know fighting against the bible the reality was that the sophisticated fortification was built by king solomon and this is only part of it and it's very impressive inside the wall were more clues pointing to king solomon First Kings 4.7 says that he had 12 governors who provided food for the king and his household. And inside the gate, Mazar's team found evidence of their work. Jar handles with seals inscribed, To the King. And large clay jars for storing grain. Mazar believes they came from the royal bakery. On one of the vessels, there is an inscription um, incision in ancient Hebrew saying that le sar ha'o, meaning to the minister that was in charge of the ofim in Hebrew, which bakery. Mazar's hunt for the house of David isn't over yet. Next on her agenda is the palace of King Solomon, which she believes is just north of this wall. Whatever I'll be able to contribute and add to the research of ancient Jerusalem, this is my huge privilege. There is only one Jerusalem in the world, but it's not like I'll start or end anything. We are only at the beginning of it, and it's gonna be generations to come. It's amazing how archeology, span literally on a daily basis in Israel, is proving the truth of the Bible, that the biblical account, the histories that you find, first and second Kings, first and second Chronicles are there waiting to be discovered. All you have to do is dig a little bit, uh, as long as you're digging with some knowledge. And there's nothing like standing there. Um, and when you stand next to one of the jars that held grain for the king's bakery, uh, talk about a thrill. And it's, it's all there for you. So I encourage people to visit Israel. Uh, and if you don't have time to go, you can always find these stories. Uh, we've, we've got them for you. Um, that one and the one that aired yesterday are available for you on the Our Father DVD as DVD extras. And it's yours when you join the 700 Club. So if you'd like to do that and like to get these, call us 1-800-759-0700. Just say, I want to be a member of the 700 Club. I want to be a part of this. And I want to be a part of discovering the great archaeological treasures of Israel, and we'll take you there. We'll be on site for you, interviewing the experts, uh, so you can get this wonderful information and know that the Bible's true and the biblical account is true. Well, if you want to read more about these discoveries, all you have to do is go to our Facebook page. We have one on CBN History and Archaeology. Uh, you can get to it easily if you can't spell archaeology. You're not one of those spell bee. Uh, winners. Um, there's a way just on the 700 Club page where it will link you to the CBN History and Archaeological page. And there's plenty of background photos, there's behind the scenes uh, interviews, and we'll regularly update you there on the latest archaeology coming out of Israel. So just log on and visit our archaeology page. There. Fascinating, wonderful job. I mean, you feel like you're walking through those places with her. It's pretty special. That's great. Well, when the animated cartoon Superbook debuted on TV in Mexico, more than one million people watched. The show introduced many children to Jesus for the first time and also helped heal one girl's broken arm. Find out how. That's next. In 2008, my husband Gary departed for heaven. I was still grieving. And then to find out I had cancer, I began praying, God, how do I do this? Where do I do this? Cancer Treatment Centers of America was the place. Dr. Neelam outlined a plan that would take care of my mind and my body, and she prayed with me. For Bible-believing Christians, we're able to pray with them in a much deeper way as they begin to really rely upon their faith. At Cancer Treatment Centers of America, we believe in the power of faith and prayer as indispensable allies in the fight against complex and advanced stage cancer. I'm back in Telluride on the mountain skiing. I feel strong and healthy. Advanced medicine and technology. And I am a survivor. The warm embrace of the spirit in the power of prayer. These are happy tears. Please go to cancercenter.com forward slash faith. Appointments available now. Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Care that never quits. Monday. Confessions from a meth head. I would get my paycheck and then I would disappear for 
four or five days. And the truth that set him free. Something happened right there. And then he sold over 10 million records and packed out concerts across the world. Carmen joins us live Monday on The 700 Club. Well, 20 years after the original Superbook series aired, new episodes of CBN's reimagined Superbook recently premiered in the Philippines. The relaunch of the show aimed to teach children biblical values just like the original series did for their parents. Lucille Talusan reports. The Philippine press and ministry partners, who are also Superbook fans, flocked to the cinema screening of its new edition. This was the first of many activities for the day-long launch of Superbook in the Philippines. Viewers were impressed with the state-of-the-art animation, and some were nostalgic, seeing their favorite cartoon return after more than 20 years. I cried. <laughs> when I love it. The part na nagpart yung Red Sea. So I was thinking, that's our God, and He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. The same God that parted that Red Sea is the same God who's with me. Energy is running high in the super launch of the Superbook Reimagined that's happening in one of the popular malls here in Manila. Most parents who came here are members of the Super Kids Club two decades ago. And today they brought their children to pass on the legacy of growing up and the knowledge of God's Word through the animated series of Superbook. Celebrities who volunteered to be part of the show all grew up watching Superbook. They say this was their way of showing gratitude to the cartoon that taught them biblical values. All the, the lessons that you can get from the Bible, it was really instilled in my life from watching these cartoons. And it's simple stuff like, you know, being, being honest, uh, respecting your parents. Ruther Evangeliquist told us that Superbook influenced his desire to go into ministry. I've been a puppeteer since I was 12. That was four years ago. <laughs> yeah, I grew up in Superbook. I love it. Yeah. Because watching an animated show, it helps you imagine. When it's, and when it's learning uh, through having fun, watching a fun show like Superbook, yeah, they're really going to learn a lot. Yeah. Seeing the fruit in the lives of the classic Superbook followers paints a bright picture for the coming generation. The picture that comes to mind is Gizmo with the Shield. Superbook in its very creative form but with such eternal value and with such um, life-changing messages. This show will protect the children from all the things, all the negative stuff that are on TV and on online that's out there right now. Superbook Reimagined and the Classic, dubbed in the Filipino language, airs every weekend on one of the largest television networks. Lucille Talusan, CBN News, Manila. Well, the television launch in the Philippines happens tomorrow, and they're doing back-to-back. -back. They're doing the old version, and then they're having the new versions for an hour of Bible stories for the children, uh, and it's nationwide. Uh, on GMA7, uh, nationwide broadcast. Uh, we're expecting millions of viewers in just that one nation. Well, you may ask, does this have any effect? Well, I've got a great story for you from Mexico. While watching an episode of Superbook, five-year-old Valentina learned that Jesus could perform miracles. And here's what happened when she put that knowledge into practice. Valentina enjoys helping her father, Edmundo, take care of their horse. He practices the Mexican sport of chereria, a Spanish form of rodeo riding. It is our national sport. It is part of what represents us as Mexicans. We work with horses and bulls. Centuries ago, it was part of cattle ranching, but now it is a sport. Chereria can be dangerous, so Edmundo's little girl worries sometimes. If he doesn't come back on time when he's riding, Valentina gets very anxious. But around the barn, it was Valentina who ended up getting hurt. My father was feeding the horse, and my mom was doing laundry. I was playing and running, and I tripped. I fell and broke my arm. The doctor told us he would probably have to put pins in the bone to fix it. 
combina. For the time being, Valentina's arm was placed in a cast. One day, as she was watching TV, she saw the new Superbook that aired for the very first time in Mexico. It was especially meaningful to her when Jesus performed miracles. Jesus healed a man who could not walk. Later, his men were in a boat when a big storm came. They woke Jesus up, and he made the storm, and now the waves stopped. Valentina thought if Jesus could do all that, he could also hear her prayers. I told God I didn't want to have surgery on my arm. A few days later, she got great news. She didn't need the surgery. Because of this diagnosis and super book, she understood that God is with her. Valentina knows God always listens to his children, so she never misses an opportunity to pray for her friends and family. Praying is part of her life. She doesn't do anything without praying. If we ride a horse or if we go out, she puts everything in God's hands. For her, Superbook is a confirmation that Jesus protects and takes care of his children. It also reinforces what we teach her about God. It's amazing what happens when children hear these wonderful stories and the childlike faith that's released. Well, what we want to do over the next five years is for 300 million children to see these stories around the world. We're, we're translating right now into 38 different languages so the, the children of the world can see these wonderful Bible stories. It's not just in the Philippines. It's not just in Mexico. We're targeting all of Latin America. We're tar targeting all of Africa, Europe, the former Soviet Union, uh, India, all the Middle East. We're doing this in Arabic, Turkish, Berber, Farsi. Um, Urdu, you're seeing the languages of the world on that screen, and that's our goal. That will be completed. These translations will be completed by the end of the year, and we're launching the Philippines to, uh, tomorrow, Indonesia, the largest Muslim country in the world. That launches the first week of August. Then for Arabic uh, nations via satellite, that'll all happen this fall in September. It's amazing what happens when people get together and say, let's do something. We can change the world. We can take the gospel to the children of this generation. And if you want to be a part of it, call us, 1-800-759-0700. We're in the middle of production of season two and three, and we need your help for it. So what are we asking you to do? We're asking you to join the Superbook DVD Club. Now, what that means is new episodes are, are released. We'll send it to you for a gift of $25 or more. And every time a new episode is available, you'll be first in line to get it. We won't just send you one. We'll send you three copies so that you can share it with your church, with friends, with family. It's all possible when people like you say, yes, we want to be a part of this. We want to get the stories of the Bible to the children of the world. If that's you, call us now, 1-800-759-0700. Season one is completed, so if you want to get caught up on the episodes, all you have to do is go to CBN.com. There's a place where you can back order episodes. And if you call right now, uh, you'll get the latest one, which is the story of Joseph and Pharaoh's dream. So if you'd like that, call us now, 1-800-759-0700. Terry? Well, still ahead, we're going to answer questions from our inbox. Haley says... I try to tell people about Jesus, but they say they're content without him. And then they say that the Christians they know seem like they always have trouble. How can I convince them otherwise? Stay tuned for Bring It On right after this. Children, each of them precious, each of them a gift, each of them unique. All of them are a work in progress a story being written, a sculpture taking form. That's where Superbook comes in by providing a strong spiritual foundation for the children you love. This month, Joseph and Pharaoh's dream. My own brothers sold me as a slave. They would explain to my father that I had been killed by a wild animal. A story of betrayal and forgiveness. 
All I want is a chance to find out what kind of men they are today. Join the Superbook DVD Club and get Superbook's newest episode, Joseph and Pharaoh's Dream, plus two copies to share with others, all for your gift of only $25. Pharaoh himself is haunted with the most terrible and confusing dreams. Can we find anyone else like this man? Any chance you know those guys at the door? Those are my brothers. Get Superbook and watch the miracles happen. We want to take some time to answer some of the questions that you've sent in via email. This is Haley who writes first, and Gordon, she says, most people I know are content without Jesus. They have a great family, a successful job, and seem happy. When I tell them about Jesus, they tell me that most Christians they know are suffering financially and seem like they always have trouble. How can I convince them that their life really will be better with Jesus in it? Haley, the number one way you can convince somebody is to show them and show them what Jesus has done for you. What, what's the gospel of Haley? <laughs> what, what's Haley's good news? What did Jesus do for you that turned your life around? If they're focusing on those who have trouble, you know, Jesus promises that. He says, in this world, you'll have trouble, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And it's through him, even in the midst of difficulty, whether that's uh, financially or through illness or through uh, the, the sufferings of this life, we overcome them. We have the peace that passes all understanding because Jesus is in us. And we have that be of good cheer uh, even in the midst of difficulty. Now, there are Christians out there who are very successful uh, and you might want to start showing those stories as well, but the best thing you can do is be the witness. Uh, Jesus tells us, you're my witness, um, and uh, what has he done for you? And that's the story that changes people and will change their perception. This is Rosemarie Gordon who says, my sister recently passed away and I'm getting these horrific panic attacks. I feel like I'm going nuts. I have trouble breathing and I'm overcome with fear. Is this an attack from Satan or is this part of grieving? Um, Rosemary, let me add a, yet another one. If you're having trouble, uh, difficulty breathing, um, go see a doctor for that one because there could be an underlying medical condition. Um, and people that I know who have difficulty breathing, when that comes over them, um, there's a panic. Uh, there's a fear because they run out of breath and it becomes an issue for them. And, and you might want to have that looked at. Now, is um, fear part of grieving. Yes, it is. And when people uh, die, the, it's, it really starts to focus our attention on eternity and what is life uh, and, and where are we going to spend eternity. I would encourage you to spend time with Jesus when these things happen. It may be difficult if you're having difficulty breathing, but do that. Focus your mind on him. Look to Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. And it's in Him you find the perfect love that casts out all fear. So look to Him first and see if that takes it away. We leave you today with these words from James. Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. For Lee, for Terry, for all of us here, God bless you. We'll see you next week. Inside every child is a hero, a leader, a friend to others, someone who helps out, who does the right thing, who dreams of what they can be, but they still need our help. What should I do? What should I say? How should I feel? That's where Superbook comes in. It provides moral and spiritual truths through situations children can relate to, teaching God's Word to the children you love. Join the Superbook DVD Club and receive Superbook's newest episodes as they're available, plus two copies to share with others, all for your gift of only $25. Get Superbook today and watch the miracles happen.